Hey, what's up guys? In this video I'm going to show you all you need to know about the Airmatic system on this Mercedes S-Class W220. So let's see first the components in the engine bay. We've got the air suspension stability sensors, one here, one here. We've got this line which supplies the strut with pressurized air from the compressor. And I've got here the wheel removed and there is the strut. On the side of the strut you're going to find the cylinder, that's the damper. Now I've got the car safely placed on jack stands and on the passenger side you're going to find the air compressor and on top of the air compressor you're going to find the valve body which will deliver the pressurized air to each wheel. Now on the driver side you're going to find a reservoir with pressurized air. Now on the front struts you're going to find a level sensor which is connected to this suspension arm. This will actually detect if for example one of the wheels is lower than the other. Also when you are driving these are used for the active body control. Now for the rear wheels the sensor is not located next to the strut. So if you look under the car here, right next to the differential on each side you are going to find the sensor right there. Now let's see a couple of things on the scan tool. And we've got three codes, one is for the acceleration sensor, the second one is for the damping valve unit, the one which is attached to the strut. And the third one is again for the damper valve unit, event memory, this is mostly for the engine codes. Let's see live data. Voltages, this is basically telling us that the system can get voltage, terminal 30, this is going to be for the relay. Level sensors, so if you look on the values of these sensors, they are not within spec, none of them. Now at this moment the car is lifted from both axles which means that the computer is interpreting this as the car is lifted on the maximum level because the struts are expanded on the maximum level. But as you can see, these values are not equal. Let's see, vehicle level. And from this data as well, we can see that the front level sensors are not corresponding. So let's see, pressure sensor values. Pressure in the central reservoir, 2.7 bars. Left front strut, 2.6 and 2.06 so let's see the left rear strut this one i know is not leaking and we've got 4.5 bars let's see the right rear this one i know it's leaking and you can see it has less and right now because the car is lifted from the soil the computer will read the data from the level sensors which are equal so the computer will not damp the pressure from this good left rear strut in order to compensate for the leakage in the right rear strut. So you can do quite a lot of things with this scan tool. Now let's go ahead and see how to remove the compressor with the valve body. You can see this hose is broken. Okay, so I ended up removing the headlight. I also removed this metal cover here. And here we've got the cooling module. There are some zip ties in here. Here we get access to the valve body. And this is what I suspect that it leaks. We've got this line which comes from the compressor. Then we've got this line which goes to the air reservoir. And obviously four lines for each wheel. This is the pressure sensor and this is the one which will command which valve should open. And we've got here marked to which wheel they are going. What I want to do next is to see if this thing is leaking. So I'm going to command the compressor to start pumping. Okay, I've got this soapy water ready. And you can see here we've got a leak. Okay. Actually this one is leaking as well. I'm surprised that there are not more leaking. Maybe I need to check as well on the other side. We've got here three leaks. This one is big, this one is medium, and this one is a small leak here. And this is the line which comes from the compressor. So in order to fix this, you need to replace the valve body together with at least this line which comes from the compressor. Because if you replace only these nuts, it's not going to be enough. It's very possible that the threads are also corroded. So let's open this line which has a big leak and see if we can seal it. You're gonna need a 10 millimeter.
We've got here a very small o-ring. It doesn't look like it's in a bad condition. I'm gonna go with this one. This is a lot thicker. I will try to put some thread locker. Nice, it goes by hand first. Obviously this is experimental. I don't think it's gonna fix it, so... Because I saw the leak is in between this nut and the valve body. It's not like on top here, you can see is in between the line and the nut so in this situation you definitely need to replace this line together with the nut i'm gonna leave it for a couple of minutes to dry and then i'm gonna do the test again so let's see the moment of truth i'm going to activate the compressor again let's wow it's not leaking anymore now as you can see it's not leaking I gotta show you closer here. You can see it's not leaking in between the nut and the valve body, but it's leaking in between the line and the nut. You can see the difference. This one is leaking in between the nut and the valve, and this one is not leaking anymore. So actually replacing that O-ring fix it. But if you look here, we've got a leak on this line now, and this was not there before. So basically we need to replace all of these components here because they are leaking anyway. But if in your situation you find only the leak in between the nut and the valve body, then try to fix it in this way. Now let's unplug these connectors and see what voltage values we need to read. Let's start with the brake pressure sensor. Black terminal on the yellow wire first. And let's see between yellow and green. Nothing. Yellow and light blue. We've got the 5 volts reference. And let's see between this light blue and green. We've got again almost 5 volts. Now let's see on this connector which commands the valve. Yeah, these pins are numbered. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. Next, if you want to remove the compressor from here, the easiest way is to take out the bracket together with the compressor. So we've got one bolt here, one here, and one that's supposed to be back there, but it's missing. So you're gonna need a 14 millimeter. Okay, now the compressor is on the way to come out. So I'm gonna go under and unplug the connectors. Disconnect the airline. So when it comes out, it won't hang on those. You can see it was leaking here as well. On the compressor itself, we've got one more component. This is the vent valve solenoid which will basically release the air pressure from the compressor. As you can see, it's installed on the side here. Through this point, the compressor will deliver the pressurized air. And through this line, the compressor will suck in the air. And you remember, this filter was connected here at the end. This filter can be very important in longevity of this compressor because this compressor will suck in a lot of air and if the quality of the air is very bad, it will definitely break the compressor in long term. So yeah, from this point, if the compressor doesn't work, apply 12 volts here and see if the compressor responds. I removed these nuts from here, but these washers doesn't come out from here. I try to knock them, I try a lot of things, but nothing works. Now this is the part number of the filter. There is the part number of the valve body. Here is the part number of the air suspension stability sensor. Next, let's see how to test this sensor. We've got here a connector and we can remove it from here with a 10 millimeter. And now the sensor is free to move. So I've got the voltmeter connected down there. They are connected on the lower pins from the right side. And there are 4.53 volts. Now, if I lower the sensor, you can see how the voltage is changing. So this is actually not a simple potentiometer which will change the resistance when I move this lever here. It will actually need power input to deliver this signal. Right now when the car is lifted from the ground, it does reach 0.83 volts. Now for those who wants to remove the strut from here, you need to disconnect the suspension arm from the frame here. Then disconnect the sway bar end link, which is this one right here. And then once you lower this suspension arm, the strut will come out. In the engine bay it's a lot easier, you just open these nuts, disconnect the airline and the strut will come out. Now let's see what values we're gonna read on this air suspension stability sensor. 
they are also numbers so i'm holding the connector like this we've got here pin number one and let's see between one and two is nothing one and three we've got 4.89 volts and finally between two and three 4.95 volts and you can see as i move it the voltage is changing and i actually don't remember to see any values of this sensor on the scan tool and you see if i turn it upside down we've got 4.2 volts on the driver side fuse box you're gonna find the abs module and the air suspension module which is next to it this one let me unplug first the abs unit So this is the aromatic suspension module. Here is an example of how you can do a continuity test if you suspect the wires are not connected properly or they are damaged. One of the terminals of the voltmeter is plugged in in pin number two and with the other terminal you can search for the pin on the connector from the module. And I've got here pin number 29. There is full continuity. This is what you want to see. So after you find the pin it's important to keep checking the other pins because it's possible that some pins are short circuited between each other because if you find continuity from other pins it means that this wire is touching some other wire so that can cause all sorts of issues and you can apply this test especially if you test these sensors from the wheels which are exposed to a lot of physical damage corrosion water all sorts of things which comes from the wheel that's probably the number one place where it's most likely that the wires will get damaged or short circuited between each other. And now let's see active test. Level values, level adjustment. Lift front. Okay, let's see. Okay, so the pump is activated. My first impression is that the pump is weak. Lower the front. Okay, let's lower it. And I can hear that air escape. Now you are basically also testing the valve body which is on top of the compressor because you need to apply that air pressure only on one wheel so that valve body needs to work. Move towards calibrated level. Let's see what this does. It's gonna get an error because the wheels are not on the ground. Okay let's feel it now. And now we are also testing the capacity of the pump to deliver the pressurized air and I can tell that it's a very slow air pump because that reservoir is not that big and the pressure should be increasing a lot faster. Okay, 10 bars. Okay, so here you can calibrate it manually and set up the values for each strut. Here we can test the compressor unit. All the valve blocks are shot and the compressor must generate a pressure of more than 14 bars within 40 seconds. The compressor will not generate 14 bars within 40 seconds, but let's see. Let's start. Oh, okay, it does. Before, when I was filling up that reservoir, it could not fill it to 14 bars and it was past more than 40 seconds, but anyway. So it looks like there is a leak between the left front strut and the valve block. Again, there is a leak between the right front level control valve and the valve block. Okay, okay, this one is not leak tight as well. So I'm not going to even go further because they are all going to leak. And that's because of the valve body. Lastly, I want to do one more test. So let's have a look on this left front level sensors. And I'm going to lift the wheel. And you can see the values are changing. So you can basically do this with all the wheels. We've got two sensors for each front wheel and for the rear we've got only two sensors. However, you can see the coloration between this value 4.22 and 4.45 is not right because this one has more voltage and it looks like more voltage on this value means that the right front strut is a little bit lowered compared to the left front strut. Obviously, you will need a scan tool in order to work properly on this system. Otherwise, you are very limited because all you can do is some tests with this voltmeter and some leak tests. But even that, you need to somehow turn on the compressor. So you have to do that manually. The compressor looks like it's still good. I will have to 
find the holes for this filter in order for the compressor to suck in clear air. Okay guys, so that was pretty much it about the airmatic system on this car. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And until next time, take care, drive safe, and I will see you in the next video.